Okay, continuing on the first slice in Alex statistics. Uh, we are looking again here at hypothesis tests, one population. Population, uh, or claim about a population mean with sigma not known. So let's go through and read this. Uh, Citrus Rental is a popular car rental agency that has a history of having too few cars available so that its available cars are overdriven. Now the mean monthly mileage over the years for Citrus cars has been about 1,500 miles per month. Now recently though, Citrus purchased thousands of new cars and the company claims, and here's our start here, claims that the average mileage of its cars is now less than in the past. Okay, to test this, a random sample of 15 recently uh, recent mileages of Citrus cars was taken and the mean of these 15 mileages was 1,453 miles per month, the standard deviation of 223. Assume the population of recent monthly mileages is normally distributed at the 0.05 level of significance, can it be concluded that the mean recent monthly mileage mu of citrus cars is less than 1500 miles as claimed? Okay, so there's basically what we've got. Now as before, we're going to need to get the claim section and all of that set up. I'm going to let you work on that. I'm going to do the same thing and try to save some time on this uh, video. It's going to be for sure a p-value test, so we do need to spend some time talking about that. But the other sections you should be able to do, and so I'm going to do those right now. Try to speed this up a little bit for you. Okay, trying to save some time here. Um, let's go through the claim section. First of all, we're claiming that the mean mileage uh, from these rental cars is now less than 1,500 miles a month. Uh, the mu then less than 1,500 is our claim in symbols, so greater than or equal to 1,500 must be our opposite. Uh, notice that the equal is here, so this is the null hypothesis, and this then is the alternate. Uh, since we're dealing with a situation where we're making a claim about a mean, but notice that sigma is not known. Let's go back and point this out here. Notice that a sample of 15 uh, mileages was taken. The mean of these 15 mileages was 1453 and the standard deviation. Now what standard deviation? The standard deviation of this sample of 15 mileages. So this 223 must be S, the sample standard deviation. So we do not have a situation that sigma is known. In fact, S is known. So we must use the T formula because that formula contains S, the sample standard deviation. That's subtle and causes a lot of mistakes for people. So be careful. This is a T distribution problem. We plug and chug through that formula and we come up with our T test statistic negative 0.816 to three decimal places. So I'll let you check that. Okay, let's go over here in Alex now and uh, kind of catch up with some of our record keeping here. Our null hypothesis uh, we said here was it's a claim about mu. We're claiming that uh, to be greater than or equal to 1500. The alternate hypothesis mu is less than 1500. The type of test statistic is a T. The value of the test statistic is negative 0 0.816. Okay, and now we come to the critical part here. Okay, we have to do a p-value test this time. So let's go back here and look at our notes carefully. I've got this laid out, I think, so that it's pretty clear. But notice that the type of test is a left tail t-test. So in the event of a left tail test, notice I've got also right tail and two tail test listed out here, but the left tail test, the p-value, is the area under the curve to the left of the test statistic. Now our test statistic here was negative 0.816. So what I'm interested in is this area under the curve to the left of that test statistic. Well, that's going to be the P of T button. So go to Alex. Notice here that uh, our Alex calculator has the P of T button. But remember that that P of T button, we like the area to the right. So uh, going back to our old notes here on the use of the P of T button, we're going to have to take one minus the P of T. And we said that that was negative zero. 
uh, negative 0 0.816 for our test statistic and of course we had a sample size of 15 and so our degrees of freedom here are 14 and so calculating that gives us a p-value of two, uh, 0.214 so 0 0.214 and now let's talk a little bit about the p-value test and how that works um, once again here back to our notes that remember when uh, we do the traditional test we compare a z-score against a z-score but in the original discussion here about guilt and innocence the idea of a reasonable doubt we said that we didn't have to be 100% sure that the defendant did it, only 95% sure would be enough perhaps if we were allowed a reasonable doubt of 5%. So if we are more and more and more sure that the defendant is guilty, we would have less and less and less doubt about his guilt. On the other hand, if we had more and more and more doubt about his guilt, then we would say that we do not have evidence which is beyond the reasonable doubt. And so let's go back and look at our situation here. We said that the amount of doubt that we have in our case is 21%. Okay, 21%. Now reasonable doubt in our case, we said here our level of significance in this problem was 5%. So going back here and looking at our notes, okay, we have 5% as our reasonable doubt. The doubt that we have, we said here once again, was 21%. So if we have a doubt of 21%, Obviously, that's going to be a lot greater than the reasonable doubt of 5%, and in the case that our p-value here is greater than alpha, greater than our uh, significance level, greater than our reasonable doubt level, we must fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's summarize this in the way that we always do. Let's go here to our diamonds, and we begin to ask the questions. Does the original claim contain equality? Well, no, the original claim was that the, the mileage was less. So the first uh, question here is answered no. We didn't claim it was equal. And then did we reject? Well, no, we didn't, because there was not sufficient sample evidence to support the case. And so let's go back over here to Alex and complete our problem. So we see here then uh, can it be concluded that the mean recent monthly mileage is less? And no, we cannot support that with the facts. And that then concludes our hypothesis test for the mean with the sigma not known. Okay, notice here that um, we must have been missing something. Okay, our degrees of freedom here are 14. Okay. This is the mean with population standard deviation not known.